fun. Let's go. All right. Welcome to the Wild Cannons podcast. Uh, in the studio today, we have myself, T. To my left, we have Jeff and Ryan. How you guys doing? Fantastic. It's a good day. Not good. a single complaint, honestly. Beautiful. And we have our special guest, Larry Banks, a.k.a. Powder Panda. Cheers. How you doing? Cheers. Very well. I don't know. Ryan was having a t- tough time outside, so. It's hot. It's hot. It's a little humid today. It's the middle of summer. We're all snowboarders and you know, it's, it's a little rough. <laughs> 94 for like last five days. I'm over it, honestly. All right, thanks for. <laughs> that was when everyone's posting their last winter little clips. Yep. Yeah, we uh, just had one of those recently. Yeah, you did. Yeah, it was a good one. Trying to cool everyone off. With Trying to cool. Winter. It worked. It was like 103 where I was sitting at. I was like, yeah. You can feel that one. That's good. A little long, slow motion, but it was worth it for for that slash. I love that clip. Oh, me too. <sighs> me too. So go check it out. Go check out. Um, enough about us. Let's uh, talk a little about Larry here. So basically a split boarding guru, as I would say, for uh, North Idaho backcountry, surrounding areas, uh, BC, maybe down all the way to the Sawtooth. Um, you've written articles for out there when it used to be out there monthly. Um, so that's over 10 years um, that you've been writing with them. I've seen you in multiple magazines, uh, Sandpoint Magazine. You're doing work with uh, IPAC Avalanche Awareness as an instructor. Um, you're not also part of another group that we'll have you share. So you're pretty involved with the community, um, I would say. So for those that don't know, you're going to know a lot about Larry here in the in the next hour. So um We'll kind of go through our, our normal steps and paces of you know getting to know you, but uh, I selfishly want to get just jump right into this, and I want to know your opinion on thoughts on the Warner Traverse and the sign that says no snowboarders. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be. I don't. I don't mind because I'm not sponsored by Silver. I love Silver, but for over what 28 years of riding there, the first year i went there i was just like this is stupid and i just don't agree with it i think either you hike it or you don't yep uh there's too much dangers involved personally um even professionally for what i believe uh but i can't speak for them they make their choices but i don't like that fact i've done it where i've uh because i'll ride with a lot of skiers you guys know most of the people i ride with are actually skiers so they'll have me their poles so I could pull out that thing, you know, just upper body strength, push through that thing, get through. Uh, but that said, I just don't like cross. It's such a cross people coming from that and upper blind. part. Yeah. 16 was that 16 to one dropping yeah. right in. And I know that when I drop that I'm full balls and then a skier is coming across and I got to pay attention to them and what their speed is because they're not going to slow down because if they slow down, they're actually running into a situation where they can't maybe push through because some people don't have that strength. This might be a little political for some people, but yeah, I don't, they don't pay me. No one pays me. So <laughs> I'll say whatever I want. Yeah. I wanted to hop right into that. I think we have a few opinions on it and, uh, <clears throat> you were going to say something, right? I was, so that sign's been there for that long, 20 plus years. Oh, or? since I've been riding here. Really? Yeah. Okay. That, that's I came new the updated hood. sign. <laughs> uh, yeah, the yeah. no snowboarders. Yeah, it's it's always said no no foot traffic. No foot traffic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, snowboarders specifically in the last two, um, I believe. And I've talked with a few other people that who, whose names I won't mention, and uh, what they were saying is, you know, it's actually part of the mountain, and so that's why they can well say maybe get away with that verbiage and uh, of, of saying that um, that it is part. But I'm in agreement with you uh, with that. It should be you hike up or you're not coming across to me. It, it just seems still super dangerous on that. And I see, or we see, you'll yeah, see we, a, fa- a family of kids that should not be back there probably anyway. Um, that just clogs everything up. And so if you're thinking of safety, it's, um, I don't know. I just want to jump right in. You, Ryan, you look like you're ready. To, Jeff looks I'm like a, you're ready to say something I, too. One of my favorite things is passing a skier on the traverse. So, <laughs> honestly. so one of my favorite things is just spraying a skier that's on the traverse coming down, just <laughs> laying a hard, heel side just throwing up that wave <laughs> and rolling through you just be like sorry man <laughs> gotta go <laughs> it's with the territory who Jeff was that mask man? I, this is a snowboarding uh podcast and i yeah. knew your answer and i you've heard this was this was one I'm of not. the questions i was like this is gonna be a really good one and 
I, the, your answer is the same answer that I think all three of us have. <clears throat> and, and, and so I have a friend of mine who's a skier. No, uh, and I, not, no disrespect to Silver Mountain, and but yeah, good or point. skiers, uh, or, or skiers. Major disrespect. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> there are some skiers who who just like ultimately will not hike at all. They don't want to put their feet to the ground. It's always got to be on the skis. I have a buddy of mine over on the west side who just like. Uh, we were down in Utah and we did the uh, the old Wolf Mountain uh, climbed up and he he just went up like halfway. He was just like, oh, this is bullshit. And me and my buddy, who's a, who's a snowboarder, we were just like, going, really? Like, you're not even to the good stuff yet. <laughs> like, he just turned around right there. He's like tired of just doing it, maybe 200 oh. foot climb. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep the good stuff at the top of Warner to ourselves. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. Earn it. Yeah. Yeah. I think Earn, uh, turns. I'm glad you jumped right into that. I'm, I I'm, really wonder if they'll put a, a tow, rope tow or something in right there. Yeah. I don't know. Ryan's shaking know. his I head. Know. I, doubt I it. don't know how they would do it. I don't know. I don't know shit, but yeah. I doubt it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't see so. It, it, at the same time, I don't mind. I mean, it leaves all that goatees and all that stuff that people won't go. Right. Um, yeah, do, the best part of Silver Mountain, in my opinion. Right. And we do have skier friends who just like totally charge that stuff. Yeah. You know, oh, I yeah. have I have several that just go and charge it all the time. But I agree that it's just for me at the traverse. Yeah. I just see a lot of, lot, lot, to me, it's just a lot of red flags for, for reasons. Um, you know, just because you, you're, yeah. When you're coming down as a rider, um, and there's a lot of unknowns. If you're looking up to, you can't, you're going to not see somebody and put your head down pull across there and the next thing you know there's gonna be a snowboarder there. and i don't know if you guys were around the year that uh chair chair four actually broke down for a whole season because one of the bully pins one of the bull pins blew and we they had snow cap oh yeah take you up all the way to the top of, yeah we were yeah <laughs> which was sick yeah but every yahoo is going up there yeah you know people who should not be there so it just opens up i think those can open up liabilities because you're not doing a full sign out like you do for cat skiing. Yeah. Um, Cause that is technically, you know, it's high terrain for a reason. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was looking at with that, with the traverse is where you can get to go, even go off the back, you know? Um, and there's some thin spots. There's creeks back there. There's, and if you're, and you're yeah. taking a family back there, it's just not. It's easy to get lost or up from up there. Yeah. Well, great, great Did answer. Did that answer you? Yeah, that, that answer. Yeah, I think we knew where it was going, but <laughs> I was going to just fill in too for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about at the yeah. the Wardner Traverse. It's, it's uh, Wardner Peak. There's no chairlift access there. So there's a spot you get right off the chairlift and you can ski from the chairlift around the side of Wardner. And it's uh, it's only skiers can get on that. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's the face of the Traverse. In case right. any listeners are like, what the f are these guys talking about? Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. It, it yeah. cuts straight across the face. Yeah. Yeah. Angularly, it's, very, it's definitely uh, it's probably one of the most notable things of silver, I'd say, for the, you know, yeah, yep, skiers, yeah. especially with the no snowboarder sign that we just <laughs> yeah. laugh at every time when that we get there. At least they're not least Nazis anymore. So, oh my gosh, yeah. Well, I think look out is forty nine. Forty forty nine used to be definitely the no, number, look number one leash. Nazi. Look out was bad up until last year. This year. We were only there once, I think, yeah. but I didn't. Now they put that like quad in, and I feel like they're not looking at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, keep it moving. So let's start with nickname Powder Panda. <laughs> just, it was actually stupid. It was, uh, I had I had just had one of those beanies. It's a powder. I it's saw a panda. that. Yeah, you did have a beanie. This is old. Um, and I used to do some YouTube stuff. I just never have time to. You know the editing involved in that stuff, Ryan. You're well aware. Um, I just didn't, you know, get to where I didn't have time. But that said, I had uh, posted a video with me with a thing on. Somebody said Powder Panda and just stuck. Yeah. So it's been probably almost 20 years. Right on. Yeah, because there's times where this, like, like, I'm like, oh, Larry. They're like, oh, Powder Panda? I'm like, yep, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting. I, like, I've been to, uh, to, to Canada. I would, to, I'd go up to the... Um, uh, split fest up there and people would just yell Powder Panda. yeah and then you hear people go oh, Powder Panda's here you know and you're just like people don't know who i am because i'm always wearing stuff right people don't know how old i am they just think that i'm just this punk kid that's riding <laughs> no. well i think it's all you know that i think uh, we think of the community in this area 
uh, if you're saying one benefit, maybe of some of the social media you would have is that we've been able to collect, you know, collectively get together through social media in that in that aspect, mm-hmm. and so people only know each other by handles, even though, you know, handles riding style boards are on on the mountain, um, and it's like, oh, we're part of the community. But if you saw them out, you'd be like, uh, is that you? Is it not you? Um, so that's, I think that's kind of a cool aspect of it. Uh, I think it's a great name. For yeah, you. social media has opened up quite a bit where you're meeting people from, I met people from all over the world, and uh, which has been great. Like we're, I'm just like super good friends with a buddy of mine in uh, UK, France. Mm-hmm. Really good buddy of mine in uh, Utah. We were talking about earlier, Huck Snow, who's the first uh, split boarder to do the shooting gallery. Uh, just mm-hmm. insanely super fun fun guy um like uh, he, he's now the one who's running the wasatch split fest down there and mike is just like dialed into the scene down in utah but he's just great to be out with and to ride with because he's a really solid rider mm-hmm. but I'm, like that's literally how i met him was through instagram and then we became fast friends we did a drive to revelstoke together and sweet history yeah, yeah that's awesome um so looking at your uh, the handle and then going into more of like, uh, you know, where you're from, you told us a little bit downstairs, um, but let's talk about, you know, where you grew up, the you know, your influence into snowboarding. Yeah, kind of crazy. Um, I grew up in Vancouver, Washington, mm-hmm. uh, and then went to college there, uh, both uh, Clark College and then Portland State University. But during that interim, I actually started skiing. And I skied for Skier. a number of years. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm out of here. <laughs> Just I love skiers. So it was crazy because I, I, I wasn't bad. I wouldn't say that I was like stupendous by any means, but I was pretty good. And I worked in a ski shop while I was in college. And I was like, man, I want to try these snowboard things. And, you know, these, because then it was a snowboard thing. And everyone's like, ah, it's fad. It's fad. And I really got hot on to like, you know, people like Sean Palmer. Mm-hmm. Um, just Sean Farmer, just those old school dudes, like riding and watching them. Uh, Tom Burt, like, those guys just like, I would just sit there and I'd just watch videos over and over again. And and so I switched over one year. I was just like, screw it. Yeah. Um, switched over. And it, it's, it, it, you know, as, as we all know, it's like the weirdest thing when you like, all of a sudden it just clicks, you know, you start riding and all of a sudden you start making your turns. I was going to say, I don't know skiing, so no, this I don't is switch over. I, I've moved on. To pass. Oh, like okay. the skiing, I'm just moving past that. I skied, but... Now I understand. Yeah, I'm moved, moving into the, the snowboarding. It was probably in about 92, and um, my first first board that I bought was a uh, Morrow 165, um, which was super fun for powder. Um, it was a pretty big board back then, as you can imagine. Yeah. 165 oh, yeah. is a pretty back heavy then, board. Yeah. And tanks. And, they're like yeah, they're tanks. big piece of wood. Yeah. And were you at Hood, a uh, Hood Bachelor at yeah. all? Or? So I did a little bit everywhere. Uh, mainly, I had my held my uh, season pass at, at Mount Hood Meadows. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to get like student pass, so because uh, I was going to college, so I'd get a student pass and I'd just ride. And I had a prof, so awesome. Harry White was one of my profs. Harry. And uh, and I think rest in peace. Um, but Harry White would, uh, I, I'd just call him and like, dude, I'm going to go ride. Like, do I have any homework? He's like, no, nah, you're cool. And I'd just go ride. I would, <laughs> and then I had uh, a buddy of mine who, um, Trent, uh, Trent actually was a heli pilot for, I can get way off on tangents here, guys, by no, the keep, way. Keep going. We'll ride Trent, really if you need to. Trent uh, became a heli uh, pilot actually in Alaska for the last several years. Um, but Trent and I, he was a skier and we'd go and we would just, take off and go to the mountain we were poor in college so we would go roll around the snow we'd have all back then it was cool to have all your your, your um, day tickets on yeah and we'd have just massive jeff, amount jeff still thinks that's cool <laughs> <laughs> no. yes <laughs> we'd have massive amounts and we'd just go roll in the snow first and we'd roll up to the chairlift going yeah high five each other like that was sick high five the lifties and they're like yeah Boom, back up again. Once they see you, they like seeing you, and they're just like boom, boom, boom. Never checking. Never paid for a freaking. Oh, that's 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 tickets. a good move. It was that's a good move. Yeah, was, I haven't heard of that one before yeah. the RFIDs. You know, before our, yeah, way before. It's back before they started scanning and stuff. But it was good days. Like it was amazing the stuff that we did, got away with. Yeah. yeah. So so you're so you're riding there. Uh, you finish up school, and then um, where, where are you at next? 
So I stayed there um, through the first part of the 90s. I worked for Clark City Sheriff's Department. Um, I moved out here and got into um, uh, the, uh, we should say, private side Mm -hmm. Um, because it's not as big issues, for sure. No politics, which we don't talk about. Um, came no out here. politics in this podcast. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, came out here and, and man, like so. So my my first wife, um, super awesome person. Uh, we just didn't go right ways, and we moved out here together. And we had decided we knew we wanted to live by mountains, so we had looked at Utah, Colorado, and here. We looked at what we made, and we're like going. It's a no brainer because in the nineties, late nineties here mm-hmm. was like our, our money went way further. Right. So we moved out here, Liberty Lake and, uh, and I literally chose a house in Liberty Lake because it's like the center spot to all the resorts. So you've got Mount Spokane, 49 silver lookout Schweitzer, just boom. And I'm still in Washington. Yep. All five. Mm-hmm. Boom. And then Canada and, 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 and then uh, Montana. Montana. And, and truly the reason why, another reason why I came out here was was that uh, I had come out on a snowboard trip up to Canada, up to Red Mountain. And at that time, that, that's kind of how we even got Spokane into our mindset. It was like, oh, this is just freaking amazing mm-hmm. out here. So, yeah. So we moved out here and lived here since. Um, and I, I love the area, like the, the amount of stuff that we have here. Obviously, we get into the whole backcountry side of things, but back yeah. then it wasn't. I wasn't doing. I wasn't doing backcountry other than you know your typical snowcatter, heli ski stuff. Um, I wasn't doing um, body assisted okay. at that yeah. time. We have questions for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll definitely get into that. We'll dive into that. Um, and I guess maybe one question before we get into you know that you're interested in the backcountry and, and what you're doing back there. Um, did you have friends that you stayed in contact with? You, you named a couple of pros who were influential. Did you have friends that were influential that weren't skiers? Or did you have like a snowboard crew or like? Yeah. Like- so, so here in town I had, um, so Jeremiah Fanning, uh, was a buddy of mine and there was him and this other guy, Chad and, um, and then, uh, Jason, uh, trying to remember his last name um we all like kind of just had our own crew at silver yeah and just like you see the gangs nowadays well you guys are your gang yeah and, and I, we just, I love them yeah right? <laughs> like, like 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 he just you have your little crew and you just freaking just you know hitting stuff all the time that's where i kind of found all my little hidden areas that you guys have yeah except for t has <laughs> been able to uh, in, enjoy the little larry specials uh you know that's and that's what kind of went where that went it's just like those guys i hung out with over on the west side when it was over there it was just all skiers that i rode with and in pretty much when it comes to skiers and powder and snowboarders there's it's night and day like yeah i think even my skier friends i have a few of them that are really really great skiers but they'll still tell you like a snowboarder's gonna just get in powder just like gone yeah just blowing away yeah so maybe a little you know breath of fresh air too would be in here and then you know connecting with the crew and then you kind of feed off of each other for well. sure yeah and you're pushing each other you know mm-hmm. hit it or shit it yep <laughs> that was that was our favorite we did the the, the silver rock oh, right yeah. there oh yeah. yeah we come blowing on that and just people be stacked up on it just waiting it like looking at it and we just come through boom boom boom, boom. boom. <laughs> and we're you know they're just like then we're just like psh, gone just like zip like we didn't wait for anything or we just yell hit it or shit it yeah like, come on, guys! Like, don't sit, stand around stuff. I can see Ryan logging that right, <laughs> right now. I like that. It's uh, it's a fun one to yell. Yep, especially uh, if you're coming through. Oh yeah, yeah, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> see, see I like to come through pretty pretty hot. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know Jeff always is interested in this question, so we'll let him. Uh, for it. Yeah, no, I've always loved riding with you and great powder days with you, but uh, getting into like your split boards. I know you're sponsored yep. for the split board. And yep. then I guess obviously you might recommend that brand or what, yeah. what, what's the best split board out there or, or for someone that's beginning or maybe someone who already has one. And then I guess, yeah, the one that you ride all the time, you're that's, that's actually pretty commercial. That one fully a lot of different, a lot of textures questions. there for sure. Because like, like 
there's some really there's some great brands. When I first started, there was five companies that made split boards, and that's it. Now every company has a version of a split board. Um, and who makes a really good board? I'm not gonna like diss on anyone. I, I love the stuff that um, Cardiff's doing. They're super light boards, they're fantastic. Um, the board that I personally ride for is Ogasaka out of Japan. And I wish they'd had more of a presence here in the US. Um, I am the only split board team for the for USA the for, US. for split board. Um, there's another guy uh, who is their uh, carving team. It's out of Colorado. Um, and uh, and like we're the USA kind of riders. Um, they send me a couple boards every year. This year they sent me two new boards. And slight changes are just beautiful. Like I'm loving what they did with the design. The precision on these boards is insane. It's an advanced board, not gonna lie. It is not a board where I'd put somebody brand new on. Um, I do have, uh, so so they sent me um, two female boards uh, and my daughter writes daughter. one of those. Yeah, and then and she rips that. So on that, and then what kind of bindings or? Spark, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna full send Spark. I got, um, yeah, we can get into the politics of bindings, but Spark is- uh, No politics on this podcast, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Spark is like, like there's several things about Spark besides the fact that, that they make just a super durable binding. It's very simple. There's nothing complex to it. Uh, and the second part is, is that they are really about the community and the people riding. Um, they will do everything for communities. They do a lot for Avalanche Centers, a ton for Avalanche Centers, like, like not just us, like they do stuff for our Avalanche Center across the country and other countries, Canada, they do stuff for those. Um, like they're, they're involved. They're not just, they, they put their money where their mouth is for sure. They're, they're, they're a great solid company and they're out of Bozeman, Montana's U S made. So basically our neighbors. Yeah, literally. Um, you know, one of the things like I went to their shop one, one time and at that time they're just in this, this, it's like a strip, not a strip mall, but a strip like shops. And if you drove by, you would have no idea this is a multinational company because they don't throw their money into that. They throw their money into tech and learning how to do different things. I like that. And coming from Splitboard Guru, that's the question it, I really wanted. And yeah, I, it, I knew the answer again, but and you can ride put it on the podcast. I'll, I'll ride them for resort yeah. riding too. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, like I'll ride my Splitboard resort riding just as much. I do have a solid. I've seen but, you do that, yeah. But there's a lot of times where I'll ride it. And now that, um, so that, so I have a couple different size boards, uh, but I have one that's just a little bit smaller that for silver is just like, just zoop, zoop. so fast through the trees. Yeah, no, you like it. Yeah, you've mentioned that as well when we've, you know, messaged back and forth and yeah, no, that's, th thank you for sharing. And that's sick that you have, you know, a sponsor that's, you know, backing you in that way and sending boards and hopefully you can get more presence yeah, I just got two just in late, 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 uh, just before summer. I had two that came in. I was just like, oh, man. And then, but I had injured myself, so I couldn't go ride. And that just kind of, that was a bummer. Because, like, usually at the this time that time of the year when they send me a board, you can usually get in a powder day or two, mm -hmm. um, which I would have been able to this year, but I couldn't even get anything in to get photos. Because they, they're putting stuff out for, for they're creating their, uh, their catalog now for right. next year. Um, man, yeah, look forward to hearing more about those boards. And this is probably just, I'm going to, you know, tag on to, to Jeff's question. Cause I'm assuming he would ask this, uh, just cause of, I, again, kind of knowing what board you ride. So when you're not on the split board, what are you riding? <laughs> I already, I already know the answer to that. <laughs> Fuckers. <laughs> I'm a pod member. <laughs> I do have, a, I do have an Orca. Um, yeah, I, I, I got it after looking at reviews and stuff, uh, the guys over at, um, uh, um, Mervin. No, not Mervin. Uh, Shred? Hid, hidden. No, oh, hidden shop. um, ski shack, ski shack. Uh, they, they were like, Hey, try this board out. And I tried it and I was like, Holy cow. This thing like carves amazing. It wasn't powder that I tried it in, um, the first, first time. And then I was like, I really like what this does. And so anyways, so they gave me a really kick-ass deal and, yeah, threw me down one, and I've been riding it since, and I I do love it. I need a new one. I need a new board this is year. Is that the sure. original Orca? No, think, no, it's the second second, second, second generation. Year. Yeah, um, and I don't know what I'm going to do this year for a solid. 
um, Josh at, up at Solnix, um, is like, I'm like been talking to him about something. Yeah. But just don't know. I mean, cause it's nice to have a solid on cause when you know, you're not going to do anything back country, having a solid is kind of cool. Um, there's, but <laughs> kind of, it's kind of cool. Kinda cool. <laughs> well, they're just lighter. Uh, no. And, and that's one thing about, uh, the Ogus Hawk is they're probably a little bit heavier than most of the split boards out there. Do you, what bindings do you have on your solid? Just some crappy sins. forums. <laughs> yeah, they might as well be. They're just they're not I like, I, yeah. Did you not see the duct tape this year? I, I have you missed I, broke, <laughs> I broke the, the heel cup and just duct tape the shit out of it. And just like it it held enough, but it starts slipping backwards. So when I'm doing it like a hard you know, yeah, like yeah, I start yeah. I start getting into I can feel the like yeah. softness of it. Like, it's kinda hard at my age to have softness in anything. Uh, Jeff, Jeff had a <laughs> slid that one through. Uh, Jeff had a, well, a wicket, right? What we uh, were yeah. holding together when yours yeah. broke. If you have a, a ski lift wicket, just put that through and twist the it in. The weakest piece of metal oh. of all. <laughs> it works great. Held for like two weeks. <laughs> Miraculously. This is the actual heel cup. Uh, so oh. that little piece that comes oh. around, which, which the high back pushes against. Oh yeah, that was like yeah. snapped. Uh, I have unions and they don't break, so I don't know. I don't have that problem. But. <laughs> you just need to tighten I'm your bolts. Pretty sure they broke. But. <laughs> yeah, if there's anything I can tell people, check your bolts all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Put their red lock tight on there. Too. No, red. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Never bolts. come out. <laughs> uh, Ryan, you're up. All right. Yeah. Um. So let's just keep get, getting into it here. Um. I was fortunate enough to be your, my only time ever in the backcountry was with you. So going back four or five years. So we had a great time. Larry took me up and um, I'm just kind of curious from that, like what makes a, a good split, like her ski touring partner, anything like in particular, yeah, I feel like we, kinda, we had a good thing going, you know, we had, you know, yeah, you no, taught me how to kick turn. I'll never forget that. Yeah. You were pretty fun. Not uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we did great. He made it to the top. Actually, we did back. We good did job, the back Ryan. side and then the front side. Yeah, so we, we actually it, got. It was a good good season, and it was bitter cold. It was like neg- it was cold, negatives. Yeah. I will never forget it. But was that when I had two sleds, or did you write? Did you just one? We you? we two'd up. Yeah, it you was, took my nut to the back. It was cute. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. Anyways, back to the quest. <laughs> <PTSD. laughs> what makes a good split? That's what Ryan remembers. <laughs> split <boarding. laughs> Those the whoop section was pretty rough. <laughs> it gets real rough. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm sure you got you got to be very particular with who you're going out in the backcountry because you you rely on these people, you know, with your life a lot of times. So, not to answer your question, but like, what what would you look like? What do you look for in a, in a partner that you're going to go out with in the backcountry? So, full sand. Um, first off, like where I took you is like one of my little nice training spots to take people where I know that we have safe terrain. I don't have to put a lot of thought process into it. Um, and I can also, cause that was the first time we, you and I had actually rode together. Yep. Uh, so I don't know your, now I know your ability, but at the time I didn't know your ability. Now I'd take you on some <laughs> fun zone stuff. You hear that? <laughs> full, full I did fine. <laughs> <laughs> did <all right. laughs> but I would take you on like now, I now knowing your ability, I would take you on some fun zone. Cause we like that full, that whole section, like you, where you were at, like there's so much right out there. Um, it's fight. You know? And we will never say where it's at. Yeah, people know, but I do. I have certain ones that we we don't talk Just about. DM me, I'll, I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you the deets. Uh, we'll send a link to that. <laughs> probably like so. So well, I do have certain lot. people. Uh, I have certain people that I ride with that who I know their ability levels where we could step it up. Um, one of whom is my web partner for Panhandle Backcountry, uh, Mike Brady, who's a fantastic skier super knowledgeable he's also an instructor with ipac um and uh in mike in mike was in an avalanche a number of years ago um but so we've we i i can say that i've, I've dialed we could get there's a whole another topic here where I've, I've dialed down a bit um on a lot of things where i've kind of become more conservative after after it took me a bit to realize how much his avalanche affected me i mean he it affected him obviously huge i mean he like the injuries he had are are pretty severe uh but it affected me mentally 
because we rode so much together. And now I think about things completely differently in regards to the backcountry. But that said, um, people who have like, you know, they're, they're some time under their belt up with being in the backcountry for one. And then the other part is having that education level. Right. Um, Ryan. One of these years, Abby won. We're going to do it. You heard it here. What do you mean one of these years? Why do we have to wait years? I don't know. This year, 2025. But understand that once I have you, then I have the trio that I've taught. Yeah. 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 It's a pride Mm -hmm. thing for me. No, absolutely. I agree. Let's get to it, Ryan. But it takes, you know, like truly like that's part of it. Their mindset, Mm -hmm. understanding, you know, like when you're out there and having conversations and being able to look at stuff. (laughs) <laughs> so, you're you're all signed i know a panel on life center yeah <laughs> or classes are coming out soon for this year uh back to the question <laughs> but, <it's, laughs> but truly um it, it's people who like like willie bartlett mm-hmm. um he's super fun but he listens like he he's still experiencing so he went to uh i was able to be one uh, one of the instructors for his level two um and and he he so guys like that who like get out there and they, they, they go out and they experience, but at the same time they question things. Mm-hmm. It might be that, that, you know, especially when as, as time has gone on, people who reach out to me, like DM me about questions, what's your thoughts on something? So there's two different types that I do see is one is that people just want me to give them their answer. Um, and then there's people who have, this is what I'm seeing. What are you seeing? Mm-hmm. Which is huge to me. That means you're, you're literally thinking about what's going on out here and what needs to be, what the thought process should be. Cause I could tell you what, what to do. And I'm going to keep it really conservative. If I'm going to tell you that mm-hmm. I want to hear what you have to say. Like I have a um, uh, buddy of mine in, in Missoula, who's super accomplished out of, um, out of the whole bitter roots and everything. Um, out of Montana, Dave Blukert. Dave and I will communicate through a season and talk about what he's seeing there and what I'm seeing here. Cause it is two different bit of snowpacks, but at the same time, there's a lot of similarities. So being able to have that conversation with people, um, Joey Vosberg out of Revelstoke, um, Canada, which they have a completely different snowpack. However, they do still see things that we see or, Hey, just having conversations about different things with those people because they're, they're just so knowledgeable. Knowing that you don't know everything is the number one thing because I don't know everything by, mar- by far. Like it's, I, I learn every single year. Every time I teach a course, I learn something or just kind of pick something up like, man, I really should think about this a little bit more. Yeah. So, th- so those bring it back around to your question of just people who like spend time and will will ask those questions, mm-hmm. but also will be part of the conversation, not wanting just the answer, but will supply their own thought process as to what what they see and what they're feeling out there themselves. For sure. So, just time, experience, education is yeah, definitely yeah. a big one, and ability. I mean, straight up, like their their ability to to ski. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've seen people out who aren't really the great skiers, but that's where you take them to areas that, that are less consequential. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, there's, the, we have some areas out there, uh, Easter shoots, which can, uh, I've set off some slides in there that could be super da- damaging, like situations where you're just like, oh man, we escaped that day. You know, mm-hmm. those, that, that thought, thought process and, and not to brag about that because it's not, it's, I made a bad decision. And I did something like I didn't pay attention to something, a sign. And then I said something off and then you step away. And at the end of the day, like Mike and I, uh, Mike Brady and I will, at the end of the day, we'll talk about what we saw for the day or where we might've made a mistake. Two seasons ago, um, we dropped off of uh, Burke summit area and I came in, I was a little cocky cause I knew the train a bit more. Um, and I was like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. We, we had gotten reaction on some stuff. So we, we took this shoulder, which is way mellower. Um, and as we came down, I was like, okay, I'm gonna drop right through here. I'm gonna kind of cut through this. Th- I'm gonna stay away from this convex <laughs> top right here. Well, I was still too close to it. And as I came around, it just popped and it was about a foot and a half Ooh. slide. And I dropped me to my ass as it went down and I stopped. And yeah, I just like, 
Like it was a reality check with like, Aggressive. sometimes yeah. you just sit there and you're just like, dude, like you, you, you get ahead of yourself and your brain is like, oh, I'm, I've got this, it's no big deal. And then all of a sudden reality hits and it's like, you're not that good. You're not, you're never better than mother nature, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Minute you think like, you are. I like that quote. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I'll say the one time in the backcountry, my only time is I've never, I've, you know, being out there with you, I felt very comfortable. I learned so much within like five or six hours of snowboarding. So, um, honestly, not that this podcast is about me, but it scared me a little bit, you know, into taking a step back and maybe thinking my, my zone was just, you know, hanging out at the resort a little bit. So it's, uh, it's gnarly and that a lot of respect for, for you guys and the experience, you know? Yeah, and then when you you know just getting into the backcountry and you start looking at different lines in different ways. There's to give an example about the backcountry lines. There's there's still a lot of first descents in North Idaho. People are amazed. You'd simply be amazed at how much is out there. And there's two different lines that Mike and I had scoped, and I'm not kidding for almost ten years, just waiting for the right conditions. And we hit well. Uh, you've been up on that side that where we get up to the top of that ridge, and you look down that chute that's right there. Mm -hmm. We call it Death Chute. It's a 50 rollover. It's, it's just gnarly. There's, you're it, in it. <laughs> you, have, you have to know. Yeah, there's a lot. And you can't just scope it out. You have to go from another ridge to scope it out. We spent 10 years, so probably about 10 years of scoping this line out. And we finally hit it about two seasons ago. I still set off a slide in there. And then Mike set off a slide that came, started coming towards me. Like it was like we were gripped at the top. We dug pit, everything. Everything was in line. And we thought we were just like, this is good to go. And you're dropping into a hole where there's absolutely no cell service. Uh, Mike Mike does have a has a satellite transceiver mm -hmm. um, on him, like that's one of the things we carry. And 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 it, it was just it was gripped at the top, like you you could cut it. But that so that's the only person I would have done that line with mm -hmm. because of his skill set. Right. Yeah. Well, you kind of touched on it there, and now we're gonna get into we wanted to get into IPAC a bunch here, but. Um, my last question, we'll pass it off here, is uh, kind of like avalanche safety and technology. You know, we've seen lots of new things coming up. Beacons, I feel like, is like the number one biggest safety technology advancement in the last few years. Do you see anything coming next that might, you know, be the next big thing for avalanche safety? Mainly uh, uh, beacons are going to, you're going to see a, a jump in beacons here soon. Um, I believe Mammoth's coming out with a new one. Um, I just got a map new mammoth last year but uh they're but they're coming out with a new one that's supposed to be like really tech mm. um when it comes to those things it just comes down to like to practice though mm -hmm. i mean you guys have used them and and it the it's so easy now to use those but it doesn't take anything to practice with those i think you know, you can make fun of using it as well because like when i go to resorts like if i go to whistler for instance you go into a bar flick it on and just go around and you meet people just go find someone <laughs> oh, hey. and people you just like like people love that stuff like you do that stuff you meet somebody just hanging out so okay. many different ways like that I, I think it was great there was uh one time just right off the side of the, the lodge on what run is that it's uh uh right off the chair one it's not happy jack but you had the uh, oh you yeah, had the, when you we were instructing were class and jeff and i and uh it was asher we roll up and we had our receivers on so oh, yeah. then it just everybody was on search mode and we rolled up and it was like burr, 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 <laughs> and everyone was looking over and then we locked eyes and said hello to you and uh, you're like this is a perfect example of you know for sure being, being safe which, which i think is great when people wear them at resorts I, I truly believe in you should wear them at resorts um it, it's no big deal essentially as you guys know tree wells i'll talk about tree wells all the time people think that oh tree wells Mm -hmm. like, no tree wells are like the most dangerous yeah and you're out with your buddies they can just freaking find you super fast and yeah big mountain that i mean for it was years and years consecutive years that someone was passing away in tree wells yeah for sure and it does i mean even to this day it just doesn't get talked about as much as mm -hmm. um, you know someone's just gone they can't find them then they find them in a tree well in the spring kind of thing yeah that's so sad yeah but yeah we're, it is very sad and they're easy i mean they're smaller they're easy to pack around um, I mean, it's smart, even if just for someone getting hurt for that matter, if we get split up. Mm -hmm. So, well, yeah, but technology wise, I don't know if there's anything really, really bigger. I mean, I, I like, um, you know, people talk, ask about 
avalanche bags a lot with me. Um, I do have a pack. I have an ABS. Um, I love the new uh, Black Diamond that has the electric motor. Um, people think that adds weight, but it doesn't. It's Those are pretty light packs. And they're very effective. So the problem comes about, and this is where we're really getting to, into the weeds here of do people use it and rely on it instead of All just right. like, it's just a tool. Yeah, It's a, it's a last ditch effort tool. You, you have to not choose your train because I'm wearing a pack. You have to already have chosen your train, your decision making of what you're going to ride that day in advance. And that's just if shit just goes bad. Okay. You're, you, 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 yeah, you'd pull it. You don't want people thinking they have like an invisibility cloak or something. Uh, and that's, know. and that's the, that's kind of the, like I've stopped wearing my, my bag because I think it kind of, it created that mm -hmm. thought process for me of I'm using it. Well, I got my bag. I'll just float out of this thing if it happens. Yeah. Right. For sure. And you, you know, um, there's, uh, the, the YouTube stuff that I did before, um, I would, I was doing some backcountry stuff and I'd always like before dropping in, you can even see it in the video where I'm doing this. I'm just my mental check for the for the pull cord mm -hmm. but i was solo touring all they're gonna do is find my body right essentially like some, something goes bad like i mean i'm i'm making a choice that was particularly not good at that time i mean mm -hmm. truly um and that's the problem is is that it creates that and i and i realize that and i know several other people are the same way there's some people who are just like boom they want to carry it because they want that security fair enough totally mm -hmm. get it and it does. I mean, uh, Mike, we believe that it saved Mike's life from being fully buried because he pulled his on his avalanche. Mm -hmm. um, so he didn't get, he only got partially buried. Yeah. Well, it's good that he had that. Um, I know also they were talking about, you know, like that when you're saying like the train too, because they're saying sometimes depending on, you know, the train traps that you're, that are below, it could be worse off if than not. If you're not paying attention, don't understand your terrain traps. Yeah. <laughs> your back's not going to do you jack. Because yeah. we saw that with, you know, the, a very simple portion of that was uh, um, the, the avalanche inside Silver Mountain where all that snow just formed in that terrain trap. And it was 30 feet deep where the one guy was, which, I mean, I, I yeah, rest in peace. It was just like the saddest story ever. Mm -hmm. um, and those things are, are you, Again, you, you, you're putting yourself, if, if you, if it's backcountry and you're not putting that into that perspective, you know, take, um, going back to Death Shoot, Death Shoot is a full terrain trap. It drops down. It's got another chute that comes in. We call it near Death Shoot. And you're just going to get, if it's a big enough snow load, you're yeah. just going to get fully engulfed in there. So understanding the terrain and where you're going to go within that is a big key part of that, where you're going to go at the bottom and move out to where you're not going to get whacked into the trees because it's all tree at the bottom. Um, and then also when you're there, moving out of the way so that if something goes, you're not just under right massive amount of snow. Right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. And I mean, we could keep going, going yeah, on deeper in this. So many avalanche questions. We got like four hours <laughs> on this subject. Uh, and, you know, and they're and they're and they're serious. They're real topics. They're serious topics. And um, you know, people that you're close with, um, the mountains that we, the areas that we ride, and um, you know, rest in peace to those um, that were in the avalanche at, at Silver Mountain. Um, and but it's, it's good to talk about. Even last last winter, you know, we had we had uh, what three. Avalanche deaths in North Idaho last year. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just, which yeah. is just like, it's none of those were my students. Um, but, but I always like every time it's like, oh crap. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, I didn't even think about the, the weight that you might have. Um, our whole, that... our whole team, because the one that was up in, um, up north, for instance, was, uh, a good close friend to some of the guys up that work on the north side. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it hit our team. Like all of the ones that this year really hit our team pretty mm -hmm. good. We all knew somebody in some way, the guys at, at, uh, Stevens, you know, we all kind of knew through each other, different people. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and there's, so those, those thoughts go in all the time. Like, like I, I don't want to, I don't ever want to see like, like you, you guys, I, I would, it would be devastating for me mm -hmm. for sure. Well, well, again, thank you, you know, for sharing and, and, and just bringing light to how I mean, these topics need to be talked about. I mean, we've had pretty fun conversations on here, but you know, getting serious and, and, and yeah, it's hard because it is, it can be really serious and it can be, you know, cause it's, 
you know, you guys, we talk about life or death yeah. when, you're, when you're in the back country. It can be, or it can be just sick. I think it's something to be noted. I don't have Abby one still, but I've just heard like our area specifically is just very prone to avalanches compared yeah. to different areas. Kind of like within like the tree line, like non alpine. That's what kind of what I've heard. We're like a little below the alpine. Yeah, we have so weird back we have area. Definitely in the weird dynamics. You know, uh, perfect example is you go into Silver Mountain, right? And you go ride some of the stuff that's treed, but it's really steep. Um, even the stuff right off of uh, uh, Tall Paul, mm -hmm. right? That, that those those trees to the riders left yeah riders yeah. riders left um lookers right riders mm -hmm. left as you're dropping in and that's steep enough that that stuff will can rip and and, it, and again it's all tree people think that oh it's not gonna rip because i have trees around yeah well, no tight you, trees you, you, yeah and you get you can get dragged and then dragged into a tree and boom your your head hits a tree and yeah yeah that's it well hopefully we're we're not having any of that and i think on that note before we move forward let's lighten it up and uh yeah. i'm sticking I, to the beginner runs we're, yeah we're, we're gonna do a salt um Park i guess boy. one one thing that we haven't mentioned uh, of, uh you know we record here at, at spokast uh with brennan um so he's back here running the booth brennan uh, you're the man so thank so thank you i know you had a smelling salt did you hit yours already or have it. all right so i think i think we're all gonna <laughs> we'll, we'll all take a little time here to to get after it and larry you've had one before it sounds I like have, i have done it with the uh, film crew in montana and it was an interesting experience back in nam oh. back, in yeah. nam. <laughs> back in nam we were just doing this stuff just to <laughs> start the day <laughs> all right well, well let's kick her off here with the uh, we'll run through the wall smelling salt Cheers, boys. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> Holy. Am I supposed to feel my brain in my nose? Oh, my gosh. Woo. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Yep. Red's Woo. good. Red's, Red means good. Uh, let's, my left nostril. Let's continue do the kids. second half of our <sighs> podcast, sponsored by... Burning through oh all the salts. That Rock on. <laughs> lit me up. <laughs> you my eyes were watering. I've never felt so alive, honestly. <sighs> Ryan, you'd love right? it. What's great is it lasts for a while. Yeah. That's oh. yeah. I like to drop one mine in my beer and then keep drinking. <laughs> so that's not advised. <laughs> Party uh, trick. Ryan, will you grab me another Brooke Wester Joe? Larry, how are you doing on your beer? I'm good. Brandon, you need anything else back there? I'm good. All right, Brennan's good back there. And you had a good little whack? Oh, yeah. Brennan, why are your eyeballs bleeding? <laughs> <laughs> Brennan's eyes are too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so let's, uh, be before we talk about IPAC and what you're doing there, uh, one quick, we'll keep this one quick. But this, they used to do the Silver Mountain Uphill Race. Yeah. And so yeah. I know you took some hardware. I mean, a lot of guys on here are taking home some hardware. I think everybody has. And we're keeping that going. <laughs> so you a little podium action there? Yeah, I did third one year and second another year. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Be proud of that. Come on. Yeah. Second, yeah. baby. That seems stupid. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a bit of climbing. It's, it's like funny to watch. I mean, you watch the schemos. Those are the ones that are funny. You know what schemos are, right? Yeah, I don't. <sighs> They're skiers that like are ultralight. Oh yeah. yeah. Yep. I could use a derogatory term. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, they're, they're, they're still they're still skiers. Uh, <laughs> but they'll just like they'll just lap your ass. Like our gear is going to be heavier. It's not as as efficient. Yeah. I think one one season I do I used my hard boots, and like it makes a significant difference. Oh, in, I'm sure in that's speed. definitely yeah. um, Jason Keen, who's um, uh, firefighter and one of the original um uh panhandle backcountry members guy's just a freaking goat and just hauled ass that thing just, do, 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 do. i'm like oh good to see you bud and and how long is that is it is it a timed event or yeah so the first year was uh it was you did it in like i'm trying to remember how they did it the first year you did three laps um, and then they changed it to where you did, you could do soft core or hardcore. So you could do two laps or three laps, one lap, two laps or three laps, depending on what you were doing, something like that. Yeah. 
So you guys are talking about yeah. riding nut the butt, hardcore, hardcore. softcore. <laughs> That's how we roll. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So I wonder if that'll come back. I don't think I've seen it. I don't think it will. Yeah. Um, they have too much activity there now, too, yeah. which is pretty hard to shut off that mountain. Um, the one guy from the Ski Patrol, Drew, I think his name was, was really the one who who spearheaded a lot of that. And then Willie was part of that back then. And, um, yeah, I don't think that they'll bring that back. It's just I think the, the logistics of it is a lot. Yeah. Uh, between you got to have the Ski Patrol up on the mountain doing stuff. Uh, obviously shut down a whole section of that which you know yeah. some people just don't like it was a good party though like we'd have those big tents at the bottom and just everyone afterwards just drinking and cold as fuck and <laughs> drinking at the bottom just like yeah it was pretty fun you're not going to see me anywhere near that event i'll tell you that much uh if it does come back maybe to watch but uh, i don't know I'll, I'll, hill. I'll, yeah <laughs> <laughs> no chair <laughs> It's not even. What are we up, doing it's, here? It's not just that it's uphill. It's uphill at a rate at, of speed. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no. I'd rather just. Nowadays, I take my time moving up the mountain. I let I let the other the young guys break the trail. There you go. Yep. Mike does awesome. Mike is just superior riding of, of putting in a track going uphill, and I just sit right behind him and just like, it's like a highway once he goes through. That was one thing I learned from there that I never like knew before was just. How much people take pride in their skin track? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. I'm of just trying to farm, dude. I'm like, dude, let's just go. No, like straight line, hook, kick, turn, another straight line. If it looks like shit, do it again. <laughs> uh, Mad respect. Uh, uh, I never knew that world existed. And then if you lay in a skin track, like a lot of people are going to judge you on that. Oh, there's a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. Especially like if you're like a. Uh, the one time I went heli skiing, like you could see the skin traps from a he- skin tracks from a heli, and you're just like, "Oh, the fuck were they doing?" Like, <laughs> there are some of those. <laughs> That's probably Japanese well, tracks. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> T was so, leading. <laughs> so understand full send though. If they're in heli train skinning up, why don't you have a snowmobile? <laughs> you just just yeah. wasting time. Just, yeah. yeah, just. Roll that thing straight up. That's what's so great about Canada is you go up there. And um, I did some stuff. With a buddy of mine, Mike Holmes, lives out of Squamish and super great snowboarder. And uh, he lives in Squamish and we went up there for a week and rode. And you're just going up onto the glaciers. And you just, you, these are mountains that you're going up, but you don't realize they're mountains. And you're just going straight up, turn your sled around, push it down, and ride behind it and go straight. Like the easiest. This is pretty cool. The easiest backcountry snowboarding you could do in the world. Yeah, insane. Or doubling up, Canadian style. Just yeah. those guys are such good riders. I mean, it's insanely good. It's all another snowmobilers, talent. and I mean, they're both. You know, they're yeah, they're really good sledders too. Right, super good sledders, super good snowboarders. Yeah. Like these are guys that you look at and in at any normal mountain, you're like, oh, that guy's probably sponsored. And they're just like, no, nope. Just, just a plumber from Canada, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> he's usually. <laughs> He was he was really good with his investments. He was yeah. But like you know, life lifestyles with that. Good with the machine. Speaking of the machines, uh, what are you running? Skidoo. Yeah. And yeah, you've been skidoo. on those a lot because I was gonna question yeah, I'm you a skidoo on that. dude. Yeah. yeah. So so interesting enough, going back to the my Canadian people, is they make they'll make a point of ride the same sleds as what you your buddies ride. Because mm-hmm. their shit breaks down. You yeah. have parts. It's really what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah um, that's smart. And I, I love, I do love Skidoo. I think Polaris is a, is a good sled. Oh, not them too bad. Although we do, like, you'll see the memes out yeah. there, and we'll send each other's memes, just rip it on each other. Everyone who rides different yeah. slides. As long as it's not an Articat, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Because if you're riding yeah. an Articat, you should probably quit. <laughs> no offense, I don't know. Oh, uh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, so let's touch on IPAC. We won't, you know go real deep into it but just maybe just saying like how you got connected you know with those guys and um maybe just what you what you're doing yeah so um mike and i started um panhandle backcountry uh geez probably how about how about you how about you explain that yeah 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 so panhandle backcountry is just a, a user forum um that so what happened is is mike and i started riding together we just met off of facebook actually it was he saw one of my posts on on uh facebook uh and he's like and he says you know, just kind of responded and i was like hey dude whatever next time we're up let's ride together 
started from that. We started riding together and doing some backcountry stuff. And and uh, and then I didn't know what he did for work. I had no idea what he did for work. He didn't know what I did for work. We just go. We go ride. We never talked about work. It was just so chill. Like, like it's, it's the way kind of you want it where you're the not best talking kind about. Of friendships. Yeah, right? So one night we're out at dinner and I'm like, what do you do for for work and well he, he's a porn web. star <laughs> sorry. i knew this is where sorry. i was going sorry. 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 Never mind. Never mind. i just had to thought he'll sorry. love that one <laughs> <laughs> so uh so, so, so he's a web designer he actually created a social media website when he was in college that i don't think it was called teenspot.com or something like that and he sold it was Teen porn. spot sorry yeah. no, i'm sorry sorry <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> So he sold Allegedly. that. He sold that, but I didn't. I didn't know what he did until then, and and so I travel a lot for work. And when I'm traveling, I'm on the road, and I'm just like I always have just thoughts going through my head. And I was like, holy shit! All these different areas: Canada, the Sierras, Cascades, whatever. They have these. They have these user forums that are these backcountry user forums. I'm like, we need one out here to connect the community, the backcountry community. We just figured it'd just be like a couple hundred people to get together. And do that stuff. So, so I called him up. I was like, "Hey, dude, you know, we met up for for lunch." And I was like, "I think this would be a great idea because your your expertise." And he's like, "Yeah." So we created Panhandle Backcountry, and I think we're like three or four thousand members now. We have people from everywhere, and it's it's firing all the time. Yeah, now it's especially like during, during the, the during the season, boy, during COVID, it was nuts. Um, but it, uh, it, it it's grown exponentially, and we get people from all over the world because they're looking for different things to do. So they'll they'll like, hey, they're going to come up through the into the inland northwest, and they find our website because if you Google backcountry skiing, and it's the first thing that pops up. And so then people started getting on there, and that's where I met a lot of people from New Zealand, Australia, Canada. Uh, again, UK, France, stuff like that. And these people will come out here just for something new. Now note, we have a, like during COVID, we had such growth because of all these people coming in from like uh, the West side to move here, um, Colorado, East coast. And the, in the, I always say, so humorly for me is the first thing people are like, Hey, where's the easy places to go? Cause when you go to like Stevens pass or Snoqualmie, it's like, boom, it's just, you just go right up, right? Mm -hmm. Here we're relegated to either out of bounds at resort, so you have to have a pass to make it worthwhile, or lookout pass. Which training, if you guys training grounds, yeah, the training grounds or in, Stevens Peak is going to be a huge hump, hump mm -hmm. to get out, um, mm -hmm. and then the stuff out from St. Regis side, which I used to do when I before I had a sled, I used to do that all the time. I'd take that what I call the death death march all the way out it's two miles out then climb 2000 vert drop and maybe get in a run or two and mm -hmm. then come out thank god for sleds <laughs> <laughs> that changed everything for me getting a sled just made it like i would go and i'd solo stuff all the time and just zip out there and, and i'd these certain runs that i did all the time which would also what is now eagle peak Climb up that, drop mm -hmm. down through the, there's this tree section there, it drops right down to the bottom and literally just drop right on top of your sled and and you could do a couple laps or there's this little spot we called, I called mini bowl that I would like literally you could drop, come up 20 degrees, climb, so easy, which right now you can see right from the top of Eagle Pass, that first little bowl right there, it's like so easy to get to and you just drop mm -hmm. down, We've seen that many boom, 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 boom. Um, anything past that point is super abby. Yeah, you, you can, need to be we, savvy. We there was one day we were gonna Jeff and I were gonna go back there and we didn't go. Yeah, if you do, um, feel free to reach out. Yeah, that's where those, those there's maps. So I was sending you maps and I think, <laughs> I, I, think I sent you the like my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I have I have my um I, like I think I sent you the, the the one that I have. It's like anything past this point is like yeah like it's a, it's if you don't have the the savvy to go there, don't don't head out there. It's it gets super dangerous. Yeah. Um, but there's everything from the one side is like super open and that's kind of where like, so we were doing that and now we have a ton of people and to get back to your point about how that trans translated into IPAC is that, um, Mike and I started seeing that, that IPAC, there's a couple of things. One is IPAC, uh, Kevin Davis was the director at that time of uh, the Avalanche center for North Idaho and Kevin Davis was 
freaking solid goat. Like this guy is just amazing. He's he's strong as an ox. Well, um, there was just a few people that did stuff there, and so we started doing. We did we did a movie a night. Um, and then we started doing a couple of movie nights where we donated, we got donations to us and we took that money from raffles, et cetera, and gave it to them. So it'd be like five, $6,000 that we'd make in a night for, to give to them, you know, bonus. That's awesome. And that's kind of where that started was, um, uh, which, which transcended into uh, understand that back then that the avalanche centers, you had the friends, friends of Idaho Panhandle avalanche center was super small, more of a bro, bro kind of thing um and then it i mean because the area is growing the avalanche center was literally put in a position where the friends group needed to grow because we had to create change um how things were so back then kevin davis would teach these courses but he would do he would literally contract himself out to other people like why are you doing this when you can make the money for yourself right 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 and so that's what what slowly we started moving into um uh, Melissa Hendrickson. Uh, I don't know if you guys, you guys might know Melissa Hendrickson. You've met her. Um, she's the one who's on the Silver Mountain uh, van, mm-hmm. the ski, the tele skier that's on the Silver Mountain van. She's a ski model. It's a joke. <laughs> but she's <laughs> she's she's actually a super, really good uh, uh, tele tele skier, and she was she became part of that. She became a forecaster, um, and then Gabe white from uh it's awesome yep solid solid yeah. like other than the snow world just the guy himself is just a solid dude he's from new york so <laughs> he, he, yeah, <laughs> it's good for state. sure for sure shout out gabe you man so gabe uh and and, good one, Ryan. and we we rolled into just where it started to grow um and so then mike and i and gabe got elected onto the board of directors for the Avalanche Center. Um, I started teaching first, and then got uh, brought onto the board of directors. I think I've been instructing now for almost ten years, eight, ten years. Wow! Yeah, so basically a decade of yeah. doing that. And then, how did you did you take <clears throat> classes from him then, or how did you? Did no, you... I've taken classes just over the years. Okay, and... uh, already I've been taking classes. I took my first class was probably like thirty years, 20, 29 years ago. So way um, way before the curve was in yeah. the snowboarding, mm-hmm. and then I um and then I I, I did it all over again, mm-hmm. um going but I did all mine over because at that time we didn't have much that was happening here so I did all mine out of the Cascades, which is going back to I think we we broached upon this about uh, the difference in snowpacks. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I touched fully on that, but we do have totally different snowpacks that happen. So you have coastal, intermountain, and Rockies. Um, and it, and it really depends. Like coastal is like after 24 hours, they're pretty much solid Rockies. They have always have uh, persistent weak layers, PWLs all the time where we can or cannot. We'll get a PWL that might sit there. A couple things happen. Either a, we get, uh, a, um, a rain event that comes in. And just like locks up the snowpack so that PWL never gets affected. Mm-hmm. Or it stays there and we just have like super dangerous season all, all season long. It doesn't heal up. So people who get pissed off about rain events, like I don't mind when we get a good rain event. If we have a PWL and we get a good rain event, it locks up that snowpack and then we're we're back to, I mean, you're going to have that slide, slide layer on top of that. Um, so that depends. Now we can get into the real nitty gritty of talking about <laughs> snow and yeah, how it's, it's that nerdy. first layer, that first layer that, you know, now you have an ice layer that could form what type of snow coming in. We want a warm snow that come. We want a little bit warmer when the snow comes in next. We don't want it frozen. So if you have like a soft, like those big pie flakes, snowflakes are just the best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause they're just going to lock up as they land in Nice. Nice. Um, well, yeah, I mean, we've been, you know, through the, through the courses, we, we've donated quite a bit of money. Mm-hmm. Um, or I, I have, uh, there. So great people, uh, IPAC. Um, so thankful that you're, you know, working with them and like Gabe and, uh, the others, every, I mean, everyone when we took the course was absolutely amazing. Um, 
So very cool. So hopefully, you know, Ryan will get, you know, get in there too. But um, we appreciate everything that you do for them and everything that, that they do. And we, I mean, even riding inbounds, we're checking the reports um, as well. So get, getting the emails. Because it, cause it makes a difference, even if you're inbounds. Like yeah. that, that can still affect things. I mean, people talk about skier packs now, but still there. You still have issues in there that happen overnight. And big snow, big winds. Yeah. Stuff like that. So so everybody support <clears throat> IPAC. Support it. Yeah. Donate. Take your IV1 class. <laughs> yes. I feel yes. pretty, pretty, I, I feel really, um, like a lot of love when it comes to the people that I've trained, like, like you guys. Um, and I see people all the time that I that were in my courses and then those, those that have moved up to mm -hmm. become, um, instructors now like dash camp, who's an insanely good snowboarder out of his yeah, yeah. he was X yeah. games. And now he's one of our instructors. Like he's just like a solid, solid dude. Yeah. Um, so many people that, that we brought on, um, who, who we brought from, like literally from the ranks where they volunteered and moved their way up, took courses. And, yeah. Um, there's a lot of pride in that. You know, we have such a solid crew. I, I'll put up our instructors to anyone because they're all super knowledgeable and have learned a lot. And they're, they're very inquisitive themselves. They don't act like they know everything. Mm -hmm. Right. And then now that we have a new, um, well, essentially new two years in, um, but John, who's our, uh, director of education, like has really kind of moved us to another level for our courses. And now we're actually doing, you know, snowmobile. Level yeah. One yeah. Courses I've seen, too. seen those, there are quite a few of those actually. Yeah. It'll get better. Um, we just had a big meeting, uh, last week actually to talk about how that's going to look going forward. Cause we're going to make some changes to make it way more like, cause it's, you can't, it's two to totally different worlds, skiers and, and snowmobilers, fully different people. Um, yeah, you have people that are skiers or snowboarders that snowmobile, but you just have people that are just like you're full on snowboard snow, snowmobilers and the, their mindset is completely different. So the way we want to look at things differently and kind of change up how we're teaching mm -hmm. and we're coming up with some really good ideas and we have a brand new, um, actual director of who's a full-time position for, uh, the forest service that's director of the Avalanche center now that just came on and super nice guy just met him last week, but I think it's going to be some really big changes. Our eventual goal is to become a level one, <clears throat> um, a provider that we do that we can give, uh, avalanche, uh, forecast every single day of the week. Oh, well, yeah. which is really hard to do. People yeah. don't understand that. Oh, just do it. It's like, no, <laughs> the government doesn't give us that kind of money. That's why you have to donate. <laughs> okay. Um, the more people who donate, don't, you know, that's what you're putting money towards is, uh, we, we can bring on, um, like even, uh, people who, who aren't like full on forecasters, but there's, they, they have a specialty and they're mid they're working their way to become an actual forecaster. And then they go out and they can do a lot of the forecast work as well. Mm -hmm. So eventually our goal is to be seven days a week, like your Northwest Avalanche center, yeah. which is huge, multi-million yeah. dollar budget. We don't know we're close. When I when I first started, I think we when I first came into them, I think they had five, maybe up to ten thousand dollars a year. Now we're close to a hundred thousand. Yeah. Which seems like a lot, but when you look at what it costs to do all this stuff, equipment, because we still have equipment that we have to have. Um yeah, there's there's a lot that goes into it. Well, I'm glad it's trending in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Um as as we're kind of rounding out. Um, I know Jeff's going to have a couple questions. Ryan will have a question for you and then, uh, we'll get in the hot takes. So cool. Uh, I didn't know we had time for this, but a scary situation or story about an avalanche with IPAC. I... So with IPAC or with myself it's too, I guess well, you're yourself, probably, you, right? you could answer whichever one. Well, what? with IPAC, none. Cause we don't, yeah. we don't, um, take people in avalanche train when we, when we teach courses. Uh, so there's been, and even the death trap or that, like you mentioned that. Yeah. There's been a few, um, you know, a Sketchy. great, a great story, um, was a day that I, we were out, uh, I was with a buddy of mine, Chad, he's the one who actually got me into split boarding and Chad, uh, came out, he lived in North Dakota and he came down and we were out in what we call Easter shoots, a little secret spot of mine. And it's a series of shoots. 
and you and once you have a skin track in you can hit this every single shoot in a day and we'd gone up and we dropped down and we dropped through um a pipeline which is a, a kind of a shoot you guys i probably, want that one so bad i could that's an easy one that's actually an easy one we could we could burp that one in the, in the early season happen. um so we had we had dropped down through there and and everything was really solid and we dropped up came up and around and we get up to the up to what i call easter main um no, we dropped in. We'd done Easter Main, and we came over to what we call a cornice shoot. Cornice shoot, the reason why we call it, it has a cornice at the entrance, and then it's got a slow slope, and then it's got a rollover. It's, like, pretty steep, probably a 48-degree slope. <clears throat> and we're sitting at the top of that, and I go, okay, if you drop right here, you're going to be really good. Drop right down through. Tree's down here. Tuck in behind that tree down there to the to the left. Safe zone. Here, yeah. Lookers left, the, the nice little safe zone. So he got a sick line. And I've been, and I'm looking at it. I'm sitting there, and there's like this little spot right here. And um, if, you, if you guys watch uh, the, um, the famous Potato yeah. 2, um, there's, a, there's a, a little ridge that runs through there called, we call it the Thin Fin. Um, so the only one who has that line is Essex, actually. Oh, Essex. Essex. Yeah, I've been eyeing it. It's got to be oh, the right God. conditions at the right time to hit this. It's just, it's a little fin. It's like, it's 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 Alaska-esque fin that drops down. But it's got a nice ramp on it, <clears throat> on the side. And uh, and I come up, drop in there, and I just like lay it really hard toe side. And I come around, and I hear this, this like... It's just, you know, uh, if, if you guys have been around avalanches... It's a very distinctive sound. And I look back and I see the whole freaking slope cut. And I just fortified out straight out of the at the apron, straight out to the to the bottom to the safe zone. And the whole thing is ripped on through Ooh. down. And uh and it wasn't it was only about eight eight inch um, crown on it, but it's just the size of that slope. And I was just like, holy crap. Like, it, it just woke me up. One, one of those that woke me up, like, wow. And we, we, we left that top after that. It was like, <laughs> we're out. Yeah. So the thing is, is like, what what mistakes? Like, that's where we start talking about what mistakes did I just make there? Well, it would have been a sick photo. It was just in the sun sunlight. And that's where my mistake was. The stuff off to the right was all shade. shade. It was perfectly north facing, super cold, nothing changed. This had a slight temperature radiant. It was mm -hmm. just enough, just made it snap. I went um, four days later up there to go to look at it and saw the fracture line and everything, kind of put together what I did fully wrong. And, and that's what I did. And like now I know. Because it's more of a um, east facing slope, so it gets a little. It has like this one spot that just gets like kind of a southerly southeast face. Mm -hmm. It gets just that slight oh. temperature gradient. That's a good scariest situation. Then and you went back to assess it, and you're like, "That's what mistake I made." Yeah, then, full on. Like that's. I didn't, I didn't ride it that day when yeah. I went assessed it. I went, right. did something super chill. Question on that: You said you're on your toe edge, right? Yeah. You think if you were on your heel edge, things might have been a little different. I don't know. I just feel like being on your toe edge when such shit's popping off. That's where you want to be. Well, so the I'm reason why really I was so it was a ramp like this, right? So I just went up on the ramp and cranked it around. A big toe turn. Just big. Just but then stopped. you towed out forty five or heel out. Oh, okay. Yep. Gotcha. My heel out was was because the 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 shoot went this way. Okay. With the ramp here, this was all really good over here. But this is the ramp, and as soon as I I knew that once I was past this spot to the. If I, as I curved around and I looked back and I saw it, I had time to react and shoot hard gotcha. left, and then um, and then moved on just out of the way. You'll learn that in your class. <clears throat> yeah, forty-five. Yeah, forty-five. Yeah. Ryan, what do you got? What do you got, Ryan? Um, all right, we're moving on, and it's uh, ninety-five degrees. So, uh, do you have any summer hobbies that mm. you uh, take to get you through the long summer? Uh, mountain bike a bit, hike, do trail running, yeah, go to the gym. Gotcha. Mountain biking, anything, anything on that? You've been mountain biking for a while, or I have been. I used to be a bit more um, aggressive, but <laughs> these days it's getting way harder. So is it downhill then? Right, cross country. Enduro, okay. enduro, enduro. So, yeah, yeah. So, so I'll climb up and then drop down. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I've I've chilled out a bit because it's ground hurts more than snow. 
and and, it, and you'll find that as you get older, those all those pains that you have right now are yeah. When you get older, Ryan, are just <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm finding out now. So <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this older. <laughs> they, fuck. It, it gets pretty stupid when you, as we start moving in. He has to hear age. us, bitch. Bitch and mom. <clears throat> it's it. ibuprofen. Sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sweet. Um, before we kind of close out here, uh, we do have our uh, couple hot takes that we that we want to get through. Um, and who's uh, helping us uh, with the sponsorship, Ryan? We'll take that over. And our hot takes are presented by our sponsor, Swell Coffee. Swell Coffee. Mm. They have uh, two. They are snowboarder owned and operated. So. Support the homies that support us. The, they have two drive through locations in Spokane Valley, 1604 South Sullivan, and uh, our favorite location, 14505 East Trent. Shout out, Trent. My favorite avenue. See Thank, you there. Thanks, East. Trent. <laughs> thanks, Shane. Uh, Shane, you're the man. So these are meant to go by fast, but if we want to get a little long-winded, it, it, it's all right. Um, but, I can pontificate uh, but, but with, the, with the hot take the first one would be resort or backcountry what, what do you prefer oh it's a powder day resort you get so many laps in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> straight up love it this is a, weekday powder day at the resort right bomber yeah, yeah, weekday. Yeah. weekends backcountry did you guys ever have the days back when we had the powder powder Thursdays and powder Fridays yes yeah. yes yeah. Oh, well, I, I all, caught the tail end of them. all the resorts were staggered. So you had like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, before Monday, Thursday, Friday, before the social media world. Silver was closed early because of high winds, but they had to open because there was a wedding. They had two feet of new snow. Mount Spokane had ten inches of new snow. Hauled ass to Mount Spokane, got first chair, rode till t- till ten thirty. Hauled ass to Silver Mountain, got first chair on chair two. Double dip. Uh, First time. Like, it'll never happen again. Like, it was just a crazy scenario. Like, I was just like, man, I've got no way to record this. Oh. It was, it was. That's 2002. I have no way to record this. (laughs) It was, it was about 2002 for sure. Uh, Not, not, no, that's, that's good. Um, I don't know. I guess I was, I was surprised with that answer. For sure. Oh, I I love backcountry, but like, if you could burn turns. And I, I, I will say say this because uh, we like to get up there early, but we always will see you up there. And I think it's kind of the respect part of it. And you can kind of chime in on this. But <laughs> he has also, secret spots. Do you have your secret like... spots? But it's also like the, the acknowledgement of like, you're going to go to your spot. We're going to go to our spot, you know, and we, see it's, all, it's yeah. all boom. We yeah, get into the fist and we're off. And that's kind of how it goes. I mean, yeah, I, I've been. I'm not real good at the whole gondola thing. Like, I can legit say that I'll just walk right up front. <laughs> well, <laughs> as you should. As you should. Nah, as you should. I don't know, but okay. I actually, actually, had someone say something to me once. Like that's rude, and I was like, "Who cares? Oh. No, tell, tell You're me, like, no me, single up front." <laughs> <laughs> I work here. That, that one always works. Yeah. <laughs> I work here. Uh, <laughs> what about uh, pet pet peeve in the back country? Yeah, pet peeves. Oh, yeah. Number one, yeah. <laughs> uh, number one is up. number one is uh, people who play turns. music. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Well, he- headphones, okay. either headphones or just like a speaker. Like yeah. absolutely not. Even on side country. Yeah. Um, extremely dangerous. Yeah. You, you, the whole point of being out there, one is to be, you know, like it Where? is being with nature. I mean, let's face it. Let's love the quiet and just the the, the sounds that are involved. But the other part of that is, is that. We're listening to, to snow. Like when Mike and I tour, we're ta- we're talking while we're touring. Hey, did you hear that? Because you hear all that whoomph, right? Yeah, the whoomph. And you yeah. hear that whoomph, and it's like, okay, we just changed our our mind on what we're going to do that day completely. On on that's on your tour up, right? So that's that's a huge one for me. Is like anyone who does any kind of music is like, just don't be around me. Yeah, no, I get that for sure. Yeah. What about a uh, pet peeve in the resort? Uh Backpack speakers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. This is not you. <laughs> Full, I thought we were still oh, on was that, was like, that, that wasn't right. your question, freaking, Ryan. I don't need to hear your freaking stupid music. Thank you. Thank you. Like, it's always I horrible. knew that was your pet. It's always horrible. Oh, I knew it is. I knew it, it is. It is mine like, too. I absolutely hate it. 
Um, yeah, I absolutely like hate the people who do the backpack speakers. You hear that, you kids in Kellogg? Turn your <laughs> shit off. Get it. I don't want to say your stupid go, shit rap. Go buy some freaking headphones and like <laughs> rock that shit. Like maybe they should have like a donation for that kind of thing. <laughs> Just so dumb. And then, uh, um, like inbounds it's just people who i actually kind of find it funny when people ask me like oh we're like from out of town they'll ask me like where to go for the good spots and, um, and yeah i can be kind of a dick <laughs> like, check out the the gond- underneath the gondola <laughs> yeah, the the gondola sick. Sick. <laughs> just keep going that's how many there's the signs um, too far. yeah i can i i just like probably not the like I'm not ambassador for the mountains, so I don't have to share anything. Like, don't follow me. Yeah, exactly. Like, ah. that, that's, that's that not, way. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't exactly. follow me. Um, what's the best uh, local uh, like movie premieres or events that, that happen here? I think, well... Uh, kind of TGF well, on this one. First, well, first off, I'm going to have to say the one that I did with like Connections Film with was Rafa. Um, Rafael uh, is a um, Chilean... A guy that I know, he's a snowboarder who did that. You guys, did you guys go to the no, Connections I, I, film? No, I missed that one. Yeah, it was a couple, that was a number of years ago actually now. Um, but, and it was cute. Like we did really well on that one. He came out, he actually, because he's a friend of mine, he, he um, comes up here. And, Is that the one, there was a ski movie that you did side by side with? Or was that a different year? Because I, I went to the one premiere that. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't remember the names we've of them. Done it. We've done it. It, was faction, it was a faction scheme. Oh, yeah, that, that was the next year after that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll, we just kind of throw those things down. Like, go, you just, there's a lot to do in any of those premieres, a ton of them. Um, I think uh, we're going to try and get Solnix to do something, um, holding the old shred here. But um, I love Sol, you know, Solnix is super rad people there. And uh, new, think, new ownership, just new for ownership those that and, don't know. Yeah. And, um, I think we're going to, I think they're going to do something hopefully this, this year again, mm-hmm. uh, get something last year we didn't, but, uh, but this year for right now, what's set? I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopefully there's something out. I mean, I like TGR, but I can get in, I don't want to get into the politics. Yeah. So. Yeah, because what was but, it, Ryan? What was the what's the show about? There are no politics on the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Absolutely not. But, but TGR knows how. I mean, they they've got the budget for some yeah. good stuff. I also know they're very uh, not good on communicating. Um, as well, so I'll just kind of throw. Unless throw, the politics involve throw, a throw, uh, throw, throw that a rope to amount Spokane, we're not involved. <laughs> yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely on board on that one. We're out, but but it's there. Uh, so last question of our, our our slow hot takes, slow burn, slow burn takes would be the best run of your life. What's if you have a memorable run that you'd say is your best run in your life? Man. I have a feeling it involves a helicopter. <laughs> I will say, yeah. And I want to hear the story. Yeah, so <laughs> so Eagle Pass. Slow take. <laughs> um, so uh, if people know like who Craig Kelly is, Craig Kelly is um, uh, essentially the godfather of snowboarding and truly the first true backcountry, really got in the backcountry besides John Buffery, who's also out of Revelstoke. Um, those guys who kind of really started the whole backcountry scene uh, in, in split boarding. Um, well... Craig, as we know, you know, passed away in an avalanche uh, up there. And he would have been the first ACMG splitboard guide. Um, so, but had he, had he not passed, but it ended up being um, Scott Newsom, who is the owner, uh, lead guide for Eagle Pass Heli. And any movies that are out right now, like they come out, um, they have stuff that comes out of Eagle Pass. I mean, and just the, tell uh, listeners to where that is too, if they Re- don't know. Revelstoke, yeah. Revelstoke, Montana, okay. and the Monashies Mountains up there. Um, BC and, and parts British Sorry. Columbia. Yep, yeah. uh, part of the Selkirks, and then uh, the Monashi Mountains. Just his his uh, tenure that he has is just amazing stuff. And we were up there. Uh, well, I told Ryan about this earlier. Is I was up there with um, Mike Maru, who's uh, uh, insanely good sponsor snowboarder the first snowboarder has done the the shooting gallery in in utah um jason keen and another buddy of mine uh, jason uh, who goes by moose knuckles on uh that's for another episode <laughs> <laughs> full on, yeah, full on. uh and myself so the four of us and uh in 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 scott was our lead guide and he took us to this uh this cooler called magic cooler which he'll it's their filming cooler they film on and 
bluebird day. Actually, if you go on Instagram, you can go through and you, there's a photo shot of us sitting at the entrance of the couloir. He and I sitting there, and it was taken by Jason of us. And he and I are at the right at the entrance of that thing, just a killer with the with all the monashies in the background. She's insane. So we go to so we're so, so Scott drops in, and Jason. So there's Jason uh, Moose Knuckles, and then Jason Keen, and then also uh, uh, Maru. And Maru's looking at Keen like, "Is my camera on for his GoPro?" And these guys are just doing their thing. And I'm like, oh, fuck you guys. And I just drop in. So you look at the the video on it. It's hilarious because they're like doing this. And all you see is me like <laughs> snake in the line. It wasn't my turn. Time for this. It was not my turn. And I'm like the worst. Like if you go heli with me, I'm a dick. Like I will take you like you. Hesitation Noted. is not a good thing. I, that is, that is me when we go cat skiing. Who wants to go? Boom. <laughs> don't even, I'm not even going to say. I'm just going to go. Like, all right, later. I'm out. Uh, so anyways, when we dropped that line, it was, it was like freaking. we went all the way to the, almost to the road. Um, so, so probably about 45, 5,000 vert. Ooh, ooh, By the ooh. time we got to the bottom, my quads were just <laughs> fucking trashed. It was our last run of the day too. Like it was just like, so we'd been riding and you know, when, when you're riding with, um, with Scott, he's the lead guide and we were talking earlier is that when there's one heli that heli can because of their the way their tenure is the heli might have an easy group and it's taking them to the easy stuff and so but we might land and have the same lz as them and they'll they might be there waiting and then we'll come rolling up we get on the heli and we get a fly out because we're with the band priority that's awesome mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we were just mm -hmm. cranked out so many turns that day it was it was just insane like yeah, so that so was that's your best run. That's probably one of it. Yeah, it's 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 one of my top runs. I've got some pretty great ones. I said like three thousand, four thousand vert or something, right? That was that one right there was probably about forty five. Five. <sighs> yeah, it went all the way down. We got it, you literally rode to the where the where the um the van was parked for us to get picked up. That's or awesome. The, that's the, amazing. That's right. I mean, you, you came up with that pretty quick, so I'm sure that's your. I'd mm. probably still be memorable thinking, first. Probably still it's be pretty memorable, run. but I've got some yeah. like like even in Utah, it's yeah. insane. I did I did uh like this year we did um suicide shoot, which is like insane. Like some of the, you would you gotta go to Utah. Mm -hmm. Like verts are the best thing in the world. You just climb straight up these shoots. I, I was just not to interrupt, I know we're running low on time, but like the earning your turns is that like you know, you said helicopter, maybe best run in your life. But like, is, is there something people always say, oh, you got to fucking hug up for seven hours and then be the best run ever. But what do you think? There's I've, had some, I've had some amazing, like some amazing. I've, yeah, there's some amazing runs that I've had. I mean, it'd be hard to go through them all. A lot of them are right here in North Idaho. There's some lines that we did um, where Mike and I have done stuff. Where we're just like, holy crap. That was in, just insane. I'm sorry. If you two, put the work in. Two to 2,500 vert runs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Climbs. To climb out is you out of a hole is like the pitch, but but worth it. Put yeah. the work in. Earn the turns. Um, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna I, I pulled something from uh Instagram. So I'm gonna use your own words. Um and then we'll lead us out after that. Um but this was well I'll say the year. It was 2016, and it says last year I decided to stop counting days on the mountain. I like to remember fist bumps as those are connections with friends that will be remembered more than a given run. Oh man. Gives me chills even thinking about that. And so that was one that I, that I picked up there. <laughs> um, Full on. And, and I think it is. And I think that's, you know, kind of like with our group is that same way. Um, and that's more what it's about on that. I've got decades of writing where I could, where I did count runs and then it got to where man i just love going and going to the mountain and seeing people that i know and like just you know whether you know like you guys when i see in the lift lines we all know people and the only time we know each other truly is at the freaking resort right but i've made some really really great friends jason smith who was a lift operator there for years i don't know if you guys know jason or not mm -hmm. he was he's a skier um such a sweet sweet dude older guy um just some amazing people that over the years i would have never met like you know just going uh and 
that truly is like having friend days and riding with your buddies. It's That's just, the best. It's absolutely yeah. powder with friend powder with friends is, is the is laughter. Best. Now that I have my daughter to a new kind of, she's hitting a new level and she's able to do a lot of this stuff with me. I mean, I still don't take her to the more aggressive lines, but taking her like out, she's just a trooper. And, you know, we, we go out like this, this winter, we got some turns and we're just amazing. And it's just like, that's just kind of so fun. And she's kind of taken up now. She's into her own guiding stuff. So, yeah. So she's finding her own footing. It's great that mm-hmm. you're able to have that experience with her. Um, we're going to have to have you back on uh, again to, so we can, you know, kind of deep dive into some, some other areas. There's so many areas. Um, yeah, but, okay. but, but with that, um, you know, real quick, do you have, you know, like uh, any shout outs for anyone that, that you, you know, you want to say thank you Julia to you. Ogasaki, Ogasaki Snowboards um, out of Japan. They've been so solid with me. And just, and I do believe that they're the most dialed snow split board out there. Dude. And Japanese boards are just insane. Their precision is, is top notch. I've taken that board straight through rock lines. No damage to my board. Like none. Just You just go, oh, I totally have a core shot. No core shots. It's just so solid. Um, Midland Radios has always been huge, great for me. Um, Spark R&D has been huge for just, like, uh, support with the Appalachian Center and, and help me out with different things. Um, Dan Dan with um, Spark is just such a solid, solid dude. Um, Josh at Shred, I'm going to throw him out, yep, for sure. Uh, Rory mm-hmm. up at 7B Board Shop, like, yep. those guys awesome. are just, like, just great super crew. Um, I'm really fortunate that over the years I've gotten to meet people and, and, and they like help me, maybe help me out with different things that they don't need to. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a shitty snowboarder. <laughs> not shitty. <laughs> he's being, he's being modest. He's not. <laughs> There's so many people that are just insanely good writers out there. And I just, I, I truly feel blessed that i've been able to even with through all my injuries that i've had and or i know some of my injuries like i've I've pretty significant injuries over the years that uh but you know people still like believe in me and want to want me to ride and want to learn from me so yeah you know i love teaching different people i love taking somebody new into the backcountry as ryan knows and who just never touched anything just went oh this is this is interesting this is cool Mm-hmm. yeah well thank you so much for taking the time um i know you know we kind of went back and forth at one yeah, time to get here and then uh, uh no 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 i was just talking about, you know like try to get you in and then just random was like hey can you come this this week and you're like got it so we need two more episodes with larry Please. yeah so we'll, we'll get larry back in here uh but dude thank you so much for for coming uh we appreciate it yep thank you larry thank you jeff larry the man Yep. Yeah. And that's our show. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah.